Confederacy of Dokes, Toronto Raptors, Scotty B, we the North, baby. Yes, everybody, welcome back. It's the Confederacy of Dunks basketball podcast. How's everybody doing? I am your host, interim host, Andy Hull. Uh, with me, as always, is my interim co-host, Brendan Halloran. Brendan, how are you doing? Hey, listen, I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking me that question. <laughs> we I definitely didn't have to do that twice. <laughs> yeah. <totally. laughs> yeah. Uh, electrifying All-Star Weekend with us uh, uh, here is our guest for this episode, you, if you're a fan of the show, you know him well. Uh, we had to replace one Revis with another. Freddie's out, but guess who's in? It's Miguel Revis, everybody. Miguel, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Glad Thomas couldn't do it either. So no. you went down one more rung down the Revis ladder, and you got me. <laughs> Here I am. Oh, we always got to. Honestly, you guys are always the first few rungs of who we try to get as guests, and then you know, if everyone's <laughs> out, then we start looking at other people. It's always we were yeah. trying to get. We we're trying to get a couple of Revis cousins. We were yeah. trying to get very distant relatives. That they all you felt get, really You happy. get some Spanish-speaking cousins from Nicaragua. That would have been good, I'd love too. It. I bet you they get international. Are, are hoot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, yeah, this is, uh, you know, we're here. Uh, Miguel, this is your first time without Freddie, so you're flying solo sure. here when it comes sure. to brothers. Uh, very exciting time. And, um, you know, uh, speaking of exciting times, here we are, a bunch of Raptors fans doing a podcast uh and honestly i'm probably not going to talk about the raptors all that much <laughs> hey you know what why what do perfect. you mean <laughs> i think yeah. if the last couple of weeks have taught us anything it's that it's perfect to, to potentially sometimes just take a step back from the toronto raptors here and, and look at things from a global perspective from a 360 approach yeah i'm trying to see the forest for the trees you know yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. i don't want to we need to, let's, let's look at that forest, right? Because this tree is a sapling. So <laughs> the tree's got some much. growing to do. That's truly what it is. Um, and, you know, that's... Uh, I, also, let's tackle that first, okay? Like, let's get our uh, Raptors discussion sort of out of the way here. Uh, Raptors, after the All-Star Weekend, uh, going into the All-Star Weekend, you know, we were kind of like, you know, we had some wins and losses. It wasn't like a terrible losing streak or anything, but but obviously this is a developing team. Uh, Miguel, what are you looking for from these Toronto Raptors in the second half of the season? What 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 what's the I mean, what's the what's the the top here? What what can we expect? I, I think I think you know you have to like let go of a lot of expectations and start thinking about long, long, long term, even beyond next season. Um, and with that in mind, I think what you're just, this is maybe going to sound a little obvious, but you're looking for a little bit of chemistry and a little bit of oomph, you know, going back 15 years, the Raptors have been pretty decent and at least prideful as they played, right? Like they didn't love getting blown out and they didn't let themselves lose a bunch of games and shrug it off. So I feel like maybe in the first half, we saw a glimpse of a little bit of lack of caring from some of the Raptors, maybe even from the top down in the roster. And it'll be nice to see a little bit of pride, even if they lose games, keeping them close, keeping them competitive. I'm looking for that, and then I'm looking for some some chemistry, some one-two chemistry between Barnes and Quickly. Uh, Brenda, what about you? Um, I think that the only thing that you can look for this season is uh, is moral victories. Uh, so a, a couple of players developing quite nicely. I'd really like to see. Um, you know, uh, Grady Dick has shown a couple of flashes here uh, recently, um, and not just from a shooting perspective, but also from a playmaking perspective. Can, she, can he be on the floor? Can he be there defensively? That would be a nice moral victory. Um, moral victories um, in terms of staying in games late. Um, if you have to lose the game, it'd be really nice if we could lose it in the final two minutes because we are a young and experienced team. That's, I think, what I would find um, enjoyable about the, about the amount of losing that we're about to do. Um, so oh, we've we been doing games? it. We've been doing we've been, it. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. we stay in games? Can we um, hang in there? Can we just make the the couple mental errors that that like uh, you know when these players are now you know quickly still on the team and he is twenty seven, twenty eight. We're not making these types of errors. And can we pull out a couple of these games? Can we um, can we you know go in tough against a couple of um, you know playoff bound teams? And can we um, can we steal a couple? And I think if we can steal a couple and see a couple flashes when a couple of moral victories, I think that's about the best that we're looking at. I think it'd be great to not convey, or it'd be great to convey the the first round pick this year. Um, if it falls uh, to uh, San Antonio, 
Um, so that that was also, hey, we're looking for that couple of wins. Let's convey that pick this year. Let's bounce back. Let's bounce back for next year. Let's Rendo convey. wants two wins in the rest of the two season. A couple <laughs> Close of wins. enough to get above Memphis. Just whatever they win, we need to win one more than them. Uh, Raptors going into the break were uh, five of their last twenty. <laughs> Five of the last 21, I suppose, if you could even go back. Um, four of 19. Uh, but in the last five games, we were two, two and three. So I said we weren't going in on a winning streak. I was wrong. I forgot we were, is we, we lost three in a row going into the All Star uh, break. But okay. hey, you know what? We're going to turn around here. And uh, I like that idea. Get some moral victories. Let's see some development. Um, uh, and I, I mean, I'm interested to know what you guys think. Uh, something like Scotty being in the All Star game can bring to him like is that is it a big deal is it is it is it like a positive thing that he went to the all-star game and seemed to have among the players there i'd say scotty seemed like he was having a blast uh they were making videos uh him and uh, uh maxi were like they were they were they were buddies seemed like the whole time we saw him messing around with dame at the end of the game there um do you guys think that that's at all important in in like a, a star's development to like get into the All Star game and like do well, Miguel? I I think it's kind of weird. I think about like the strike between Scotty and the last roster we had, and the last roster was made up of guys like Van Vleet and Siakam who had to claw their way from even below the basement to even get considered and really earn their spots. True. And Scotty seems like a guy who was selected in his early teens to be like you're the you're going to be one of the ones and everything just because kind of given to him to some degree um and you kind of you want to have a guy who expects to be the absolute best but i feel like maybe he's had a lot of stuff handed to him on a platter over his young career and he's about to face a lot of hardship and maybe that's good maybe that's what he needs to sort of develop a winner's mentality so i wonder if being sort of hand gifted this all-star appearance was maybe like not really what he needed right now. Hope it's 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 a give and take situation. It keeps him on the path of being a superstar, but also it feels like I don't know. I can think of one forward who could have probably gotten selected ahead of him for an injury replacement, <laughs> who used to play for the Raptors, and it rhymes with Miakum. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of crazy that he got picked. To be honest, um, so you think overall that could be a detriment. You're thinking I, maybe I think so. getting in, just squeezing in there, just sneaking into that game uh, might be sort of more things just kind of being handed to him. Yeah, give, this guy needs a, a full half season of like prove that you have fight in you. You know, I don't know. That's where I'm at right now. I'm frustrated. It's, it's interesting also, though, you mentioned a full half season. Like that is one thing to, to be noted, I think, for all star games is that. This is only a half of a season we've seen any of these players uh, involved with. So it's it's kind of weird that we're like, you are the best of the best yeah. <laughs> up till this point. Yeah. And then later on, none of it matters for some reason, playoffs included. Like what? You've had a good two months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bino, you got what do you think with that? Yeah, I think it's really interesting what Miguel said, because I think it's in, about uh, Scotty being handed things, because I think it's important to remember, remember that uh, Scotty regressed last year. Uh, Scotty actually took a step back. Um, and then still, still the front office was like, now nah, we're rebuilding around this guy. And that so far this season has proven to be probably the smartest uh, thing that they could do. It's probably the right step. I think we're all fine. We don't want to watch the rebuild per se on a night to night basis, but I think we all can agree that that was probably coming and it's good to get on with it and start that process so that it can be over. Yeah. But but Scotty was <laughs> yeah. handed a team after last year showing a, a, a very little indication that he could actually be the guy for a team. Um, and again, that has turned around this year. But um, yeah, I wonder about Scotty going in and he comes in with the mentality of just like, oh my, like he's like, oh my gosh, it's so good to be here. And he's so excited and all this stuff. And I just wonder if he's going to be like, uh, I, I, I'm saying, <laughs> I, this is a long way of me saying, uh, I am on Scotty is asking out of Toronto watch. Um, mm. all, already. already. Oh, I'm when, with you. When when you when players go and they play for Team USA or they go to the All-Star game and all of a sudden they're around all these other star players and it's their first time and they're going like, at first time you're like, oh, this is really exciting. But the more you're there, the more you expect to be there and the more you expect to be playing around stars and the more that stars ask out of teams and stuff. And I think it's the, um, it, I, I love how I'm taking the one positive of the season. Yeah. Barnes being selected. Actually, it's 
really and fucking bad. The entire way and going like this is actually a huge disaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, is, yeah. Isn't, isn't there something about him being like, you know, there's this like, I don't know if you guys feel this too, but there's this kind of rumor going around that maybe some people on the team don't like him that much. And there's some, there's, you know, the fans are kind of split how much you love him or whatever. But a lot of the greats in the NBA, right from his rookie season, have been like, this guy's going to be something. He's going to be totally incredible. And then there's this clip that went viral from All-Star Weekend of behind the scenes kind of in the tunnels where Reggie Miller pulls him aside and is kind of says something to the effect of like, you're going to make the All-Star team every year now going forward for 15 years. We expect you to be here as long as LeBron. You are special. It's like what, some people are seeing this in him still. So there's got to be something to okay. that, right? Okay. I feel like we have like um... – high school boyfriend or high school girlfriend syndrome where your partner has gone to the orientation at their college and you're like a year <laughs> younger than them and you're like oh no oh no there they go <laughs> you know and they, oh, they had back. a lot of fun that weekend but they'll come they'll be back on weekends to visit no, me and stuff back. yeah 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 no isn't it's that, like isn't that weird though like isn't this like a really weird mentality like because i'm having that and but i don't really know why right like i can kind of infer these kinds of things but like, and, and Miguel's, you know, I think a little mixed. Miguel, am I reading this? You're pretty mixed on Scotty. I, I mean, talent wise, no. I think he has all the tools to be like a, a, the best player on a team for a, for a long run. Um, I'm super impressed with his skill set and his ability to play well when he's rolling. But it's just, there's, we were spoiled watching Pascal play, who just like tried so hard on every play, every single game for years and years and years so i'm just like not totally I'm, I'm team pro scotty for sure but i'm i haven't really seen the full mentality that i want to see yet in mm -hmm. terms of like consistent attacking to win no matter what i mean that's something that young players in general a lot of them struggle with i'd say right yeah. especially um uh when you're on a team where you didn't mesh well you know with the guys before so you know hopefully it is just that maturing thing that when we can see we get to see that happen hopefully i just think it's interesting that we're all like um we have this like new star player and he uh statistically he's quite good and um in the clutch he's quite good and we're all kind of like eh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i like him but do i like him like him? is this is really? this because we've had these players on our team before and like it's not, it hasn't really worked out for us that way you know like whether it's go like go all the way back like damon sodermeyer vince carter right uh chris bosh tracy even, mcgrady tracy mcgrady De demar De demar de rosen right like these are guys we got you know uh early in their careers slash draft or whatever and and we were like we put all of our we put everything we had into them you know uh and then they end up you know, playing their careers out here to mediocre success for the most part. Obviously, Vince having real stellar moments and then like Jabbar being almost getting to the top of the mountain and just being the catalyst that gets us gets us there, though. Um, but I feel like that's I think we're trained to be like that. Toronto is is as a basketball, you know, fan base. We're trained to like maybe just distance ourselves a little bit just to protect ourselves emotionally is Meanwhile, it an inferiority the, complex is that what it is that's part of it no question i think like all any toronto any any canadian sport uh, team in a an american dominated market is just good we've that's we're gonna feel that way no matter what um, um I, think I think there's two inevitable. things to play that are that are like butting heads against each other i think that there is an inferiority complex that we just naturally have um, and then I also think that there's a championship pedigree having watched a championship championship team play and just the amount of buy-in and unselfishness and um, uh, guys who are just committed to the franchise, uh, like a mm -hmm. Kyle Lowry, um, like a, like even somebody mm -hmm. like a Norm Powell, who was like, yes, I want to be here. I, this is what I, you know, Mark, this is where I should even, be. This, the, the, even you know, acquiring the Gasol. A thousand percent. Right. So, like, I think it's these two things butting up against each other where we go like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, is he going to be happy here? Is he going to play? Is he going to perform? Is he just going to pout? Uh, and it's also the championship thing of, like, we know what it takes to been there. We've seen it. We've been through it. We we know as fans what we're looking at now when we're looking for championship players, when we're looking for a championship team. And I think it's maybe that, that, that like, for me at least, it's laying in that conflict right there between those two yeah. pieces. 
Well said. I agree. I feel I feel like that's a um, very accurate depiction of what what's what's happening here. Uh, we're so far out from it also that it's just like, oh, oh, God, you know, nothing is good. <laughs> You know. Yeah, well, we haven't had it. We haven't... We're just like, oh god, uh, Scotty Barnes an all star, but it's terrible. You know, like we do, we have that a bit too. Uh, this like doom and gloom. Uh, um, I just think we're not used ago. to being here either. Like we, it's you know, it's the been over ten been, years. The Raptors really. have been kind of decent ish since twenty ten, right? Like with you know, minus a couple blips, like the Tampa year, but that was COVID. What are you going to do? Or, mm. or or at least not even good, but expecting to be competitive. And having a team embrace being like, we absolutely do not expect to be competitive. It's like it's just like a foreign feeling. And I mean, we've all been fans for a really long time, but younger fans, you know, who only came of age in that era, they don't, they can't even glimpse what it's like to expect to lose and tell yourself that's good. So you know, it's just a foreign, icky feeling. So when something good is happening, you're like, I thought I was bracing for this long, cold winter. Like, <laughs> what do you mean something's good? Um, speaking of the long, cold winter, uh, one thing hopefully to warm up the long, cold winter is the NBA All-Star Game and the surrounding skills competitions. Uh, and, you know, we had Scotty in the skills competition on Team All-Star, which I had people coming in who like, because we had people over that night, uh, Bren, Breno came over and like uh, some other people and they weren't all like understanding what was going on in the skills competition. They're not all big basketball fans. So having yeah, to explain I, I understood what was happening. Yes. Brendan definitely understood. I assume yeah, but so, some of our other friends were like, so, so what there's three teams. And we're like, I'm like, no, this is just the skills competition. And I'm, I'm like, what are these teams? I was like, okay, they're team all-star. There, you know, the fact that there was like team all star and team Indiana and team first picks was like confusing to the not average basketball viewer. They were very confused by the whole thing. And they're like, why are they? Isn't it the all star weekend? It's like, uh, yes. uh, Why are they standing on a jumbotron that's laying down? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, everyone was was both impressed at, at the start and then sickened by the giant jumbotron by the three point competition. Yeah, the the eerie green glow. Um. But okay, but but speaking about like to 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 uh, move from Scotty into this thing, uh, obviously Scotty playing on Team All Star uh, fumbled right off the bat. Obviously, everyone massively embarrassed, uh, our butts fell out. But he was fine. They they came back. The All Star team uh, uh, did well in that competition. Did you guys know about the controversy? Because we we had like the sound off because it was like we had you know pe- people were here, but like there was a bit of a controversy surrounding the end of that. Um, in that Team Indiana got credit for a bounce pass that went in on that on that absolutely bizarre passing drill thing that i could not i could not understand i understand some of it but then there's some parts where it's like they're just throwing it in i think is that what they're supposed to do why is that worth more than the other one anyways uh there was a bounce pass that didn't bounce that went in that they counted for team indiana so it shouldn't have been a tie at the end so it should have just been a a clean all-star win guys what are your thoughts on the controversy (laughs) Go ahead, Brendo. I'm too outraged oh, great. to speak. Yeah, me first. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm appealed. Uh, <laughs> this, this is not the way of the. Did, well, did you have fun watching this competition? Was it strange? Was it weird? What was it? What did you think of anything um, of it? Or I, I, I think everyone. So there's a lot. After every single All Star game, there is a lot of hand wringing, and like, oh, we'll get oh, to the hang. We'll get to the hand wringing. I promise you. Okay. <laughs> that's all we'll I want to talk about. Is all, okay, all well, we'll get to that. Is, it's on the is docket. The, is the is the level of hand wringing that's going on? Um, it was. Am I disappointed that Scotty didn't win? I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a shit. He should have won. Anyways, um, um, did you guys I, see? Go ahead. I'm most outraged at the court. I think the court was so distracting and preposterous. And I guess the I guess All Star Weekend is mostly for for kids so yeah. it makes sense that way but it was like i think even as a kid there's an information overload situation here where it just like was removed from basketball and they always change the skills competition every year and so it's hard to follow i feel like even the players a couple of the players ran the wrong way when they were supposed to be yeah. running around the pylons or whatever you want to call them so i think it was confusing for everyone so that there was a, a controversy and a break in the rules is also like of rules, what rules? A break in the like integrity of the skills competition <laughs> is kind of inconsequential because it didn't make any sense, anyways. 
Um, I guess, also, the, the skills competition being three rounds was insane. It lasted so long. It was long. It felt long, too. Um, I say this. I looked for people's reactions to the LED court, like players' reactions. I couldn't see anything. Now, I'm sure uh, Adam Silver's got them on pure gag order. That's Don't talk say. shit about the, the cool new technology we're using, of course. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, I, it seemed like it. It seemed it didn't seem like it was bothering the players during it at all. But um, I thought it was overall cool. I think they made some bold choices with it. Uh, <laughs> that hey, if you're gonna make those choices, it's it's the All Star Game. It's it's the skills competition. Go for it. Um, yeah. But anyways, I don't know. I thought overall it was cool, and maybe the technology can be used somewhere else. Maybe <laughs> yeah. Um, did you How about the actual did, game? Like I, I was thinking it. about about ways that because everyone always goes, oh, how can we fix the All Star Game, right? And if if the promise, like the the All Star Game is supposed to promise the best on best competition, but nobody tries, so it's not a best on best competition. It's not that, yeah. So I was like, well, well what if? First of all, I don't think that's a problem. Like I don't think there's a problem with All Star Games in general. I think everyone gets really upset about them after they happen, and then they just kind of go away. As long as you know sponsors are still happy, like it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, there's this is just a dead spot in the the schedule, and I don't think that that a ton needs to be done uh, to fix All Star Weekend in general. Um, but I was like, what? But if you did want to fix the game, and if you did want to get a little crazy, here comes the hand ringing. Here we go. No, 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 no. This is not the hand ringing. That part was the other. That was the other part about the hand ringing. Um, I'm like, why not use this court and like turn it into like like um, like uh, like more of a game. Where it's like, oh, the court lights up a different color, and now all of a sudden everything is worth three points. Um, or there's different spot, like you highlight different spots on the court, where all of a sudden, all of a sudden it's like the three point line is actually now here. Now the three point move the three point line up, um, and you you start fucking with the game in real time, um, and the players have to react, and so it's more of like a squid game type. Uh, I see. To me, this level feels of level of interaction that the, so the players are just like, oh my God, we're trying to figure this out. And it's shorter. Just make it shorter. Two 15-minute halves. Two 20-minute halves. Of, of, uh... to, me, to me, it feels like the All-Star Weekend is like a painting that a uh, 100 people are trying to complete together and they just keep <laughs> adding paint to the easel yeah. where it's like, or, you know, to, to the canvas rather. And it's like, let's just let's just pick something and have it stick for five minutes and see if that works instead of constantly being like got to reinvent the entire wheel every time it's like even the rules for the dunk off kind of like change every year in a way that you're like i can't i i don't know what i'm supposed to be excited about you know so you, well, but yeah, you, what you, if it was all chaos i'm just saying yeah, brennan is, what, is seriously this not, suggesting was this not what chaotic enough? Whole other way was this not chaotic enough I can just see the players go uh, walking around on a court where the three point line has just changed. <laughs> can you imagine any of them being like, "Oh, I got to get back to that new three point line," or can you just be going, "What the hell?" Yeah. <laughs> like their reactions would be so bad; it would be terrible. But we can't get the other reaction. We can't get the earnest trying. So let's go the other way and just have everyone go like, "I don't know what I, I don't even know what I'm in." I just, I just think it's going to make it worse. But anyways, I, I actually think that I thought of the same thing. I was like, you get, if you have hot spots, hot would that hot help? Spots. Hot, spots? hot spots? Who knew, you know? who knew that NBA jam was soon going to be the most realistic basketball yeah. video game? <laughs> Way ahead. Put little time. trampolines. I mean, <laughs> they said slam ball was coming back, but I didn't see it. Yeah. You know? Um, okay. The rising stars game had a, had a, had a fun thing for us. Canadian basketball fans. Uh, um, uh, ben Matherin was uh, um, uh, the MVP of the game and had a little moment where he was trash talking. Did you guys see this at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was wicked. So a little bit of intensity in the Rising Stars game there. And um, I mean, this is a game where they still don't care, but they obviously care a little bit more because they're trying to, you know, they're trying to like build up the name, you know, early in the career type of thing. So uh, 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 Benedict Matherin, of course, uh, um, uh, looking good for Team Canada. There was a lot of takeaways from Team Canada for this in that um, we had an MVP and we had uh, uh, our first, I mean, outside of Steve Nash, we had our first since Steve uh, starting Canadian in uh, SGA. So that was exciting. Um, I guess, if nothing else, us Toronto basketball fans can look forward to international competition. 
Don't even get me started because I am absolutely jacked on the Olympics. And I will say Benedict Matherin hasn't been selected to play for Team Canada yet. Uh, if, in all likelihood, he probably will this upcoming summer. But yeah. he hasn't been yet. And that, I think, speaks to how high quality Team Canada's roster has become. That even a guy like mm-hmm. Ben Matherin is you're like, is there room for this guy? Meanwhile, he's killing it on Indiana, like doing so yeah. well. Yeah. Um, the other thing about him that I loved in the Rising uh, Stars competition is that he airballed a dunk. Yes, which he is did. like pretty pretty unique and difficult. Difficult Shaq to do. Pull to pull off <laughs> airballing a dunk. You get rejected yeah. by the rim clips all the time, but fully yeah. missing the rim with a slam dunk in the NBA, pretty impressive. And it wasn't because like another player touched it while he was going <laughs> up or anything like that. It was just he was going up for it. Like you could see it kind of slip off his fingers a little bit as he went for it. But it was going to be one of those dunks where you just throw it in from kind of far back, anyways. Like it was a bit of yeah. space between him and the rim, so it was a wild attempt. But it was uh, uh it was fun. Um, we I all go, that, um, go ahead. Yeah, the Rising Stars game, I think, actually was the most entertaining thing that I watched uh, out of mm-hmm. all of our All-Star Weekend. Uh, I watched the the G League uh, team versus uh, the Victor Wemben Yama team. And uh, the G League team wanted to beat him. They wanted to, they were trying to win that game. It wasn't like playoff level intensity, but people were trying. And I just yeah. love that the the announcers kept saying, because the, the G League team got up, real, got up big. Um, and then the Wemben Yama team came back. But they, the announcers just kept saying, like, oh, the G League team is up. Can the unthinkable happen? This is the unthinkable. <laughs> like, it was just, they kept trying to, 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 um, to, to intone that this was, like, such a huge, huge, unthinkable, unspeakable event. That, Brendo, uh, this is what we need to make all the games competitive. Make sure the pay- players are only paid eighteen thousand dollars a year for their work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's well, always like big contracts of like, hey, like, hey, maybe we'll give uh, Connor McDavid a million dollars or something. It's like, no, let's give him nothing. Let's give all these people nothing, and then they have to perform. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes the money more important. Uh, we saw Steph versus Sabrina. It finally happened uh i thought it was great what did you guys think i thought it was amazing yeah, yeah everyone's not abs- i thought it was absolutely incredible um i thought she showed up right away she must have been a little nervous you know because it's oh my the god first, yes the first of its kind and there's so much rampant sexism in sports that she has to sort of she can't just have a good time she has to go there and represent an entire movement and and then you know an entire you know, part of the gender spectrum on her own. And she came out and cleared the first rack right away. And I was just like, I was like, this rules. This is so great. The three point competition is still the thing that rules every year. Even this year, the three book, the best part was Steph versus Sabrina, I'd say, but like the other competition was also great. Like Mm -hmm. the shooting is so out of this world, incredible that there's only a, a room for a tiny bit of like failure at all if you want to qualify to go to the finals and win in the three-point competition and like cat was legitimately competitive he missed the last shot he actually was like oh god damn it whereas like no other event at all in all-star weekend sort of pulls that competitiveness out of players so three-point competition to me should be the highlight event honestly i agree it's it's the only spot where people can where it can be a legitimate best on best competition because no one's actually worried about getting injured from shooting 33s or whatever the number is um uh yeah so you can get actually competitive uh moments out of it and uh the separating of the Steph and sabrina thing into its own event was really awesome too uh it really felt like it felt like wrestling almost where there's the undercard (laughs) and there's the main event and all of a sudden you're like oh that's time for the main event this is gonna be really good um i I loved it i always love the three-point competition i went out i bought uh, five cases of Sierra Mist right afterwards. I <laughs> about you it. mean Starry? Yeah, you bought oh, some Starry, 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 so so branded bad. Sierra Mist, Starry. Yeah, yeah. correct. Uh, I'll tell you how I was also like wrestling. Uh, that terrible belt that they bought for this. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about the belt. <laughs> the belt was awful. It was. It looked like someone made it out of cardboard. Meanwhile, you can get those belts made in like a couple days for like 200 bucks you know what i mean and they're nice and you know so i was really shocked but uh yeah of course amazing also like i mean i know we know this it's in, it's 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 ingrained into the actual competition itself but 
Sabrina Ionescu did not just face off against uh, an elite NBA uh, yeah. basketball player. She faced off against the best three-point shooter of all time. I yeah. think that needs to be said more because it's crazy that we're like, hey, you did really great. You have the record uh, for threes. Now face the best of all time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. like, oh, my God. Okay. But she did it. She scored the same as the guys in the in the um in the regular three-point shot contest she would have made the finals there as well exciting very she very, she, very fun 26 was what dame won with i think so she got the winning score like, yeah yeah he think i i think they've got 27 in the final oh, yeah. maybe maybe i don't know but i know it was a it was a it was that three-way tie for 20 or four yeah, she, tie for, she absolutely three -way tie killed for 26. it Anyways. she absolutely yeah killed it. And, I, and i was reading great. somewhere about the viewership numbers on television and that that head-to-head -head battle between Steph and Sabrina was like the peak viewership moment. So it's like, that's an indicator that's... of like, okay, you have the people watching the thing who love the NBA, but a bunch of WNBA fans just tuned in to watch that. And then when that was over, they were like, peace out. So it was, it was a great indicator of like, just how popular women's basketball is becoming, which is something I'm really excited about. And 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 women and in, women involved in sports. I mean, we're see we see we have this version of it where we have uh, another like leagues uh, representative player, you know, coming over and being involved in this. I mean, we just had the Super Bowl where like obviously it's been memed a ton, but like all of the Taylor Swift fans coming and watching the game, but also being legitimately excited about the game. Like that was one of the things I took away from uh, a lot of the social media posts after the Super Bowl was that. Um, the positive ones, anyways. There's tons. I'm sure there's tons of negative ones. I didn't really see that many, but like the positive ones were like, "Hey, here, here was us watching the Super Bowl last time, and it was like it'd be like three guys, like a dad and the two brothers watching the Super Bowl, and then the next was like their whole family was watching it, right? Their 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 mom, the sisters, and like other family members and so on. And it's just like, well, that's a no brainer, man. Like bring in as many people as you can to watch the sport, right? Get more people involved in in the sport. So I think it's a obviously. I mean, it's obviously a great move. Uh, uh, for them to do something like this and good on Sabrina. She crushed it. Um, uh, we saw, we said, we mentioned Dame. Um, he hold he ties a record with this all-star game, which like all-star game records are only fun to talk about for like three days. So let's just talk about it for <laughs> really quickly. Cause otherwise who gives a shit? They used but, to be cool. <laughs> like maybe, um, but they, uh, Dame ties the record of being the only player to win uh, one of the individual contests on NBA Saturday night skills and an MVP in the skills competition. Um, it's always cool when someone can uh, be up there with one of the greatest of all time. I mean, uh, can he, uh, I guess, can he uh, uh, pull this into the uh, regular season here? Can the, can the, can the Bucks uh, capture some of the success <laughs> that Dave's had in the all-star game here? Are you asking if whether or not it's Dame time? I'm asking. Yeah, I'm asking. It certainly was on the weekend. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Do we think that this is the three point contest win in All Star Weekend, Indiana, <laughs> is going to be what spurs the Bucks uh, to a championship? I think. Well, you've got a guy. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got a guy who is obviously uh, uh, one of the one of the one of the greats. Um, but like, this is a tough season, man. There's so many good teams, so many, so many good, uh, like, uh, starting lineups out there that like a couple years ago, there's no question this Bucks team is like going to the finals. Whereas now it's like, oh, you're like maybe the th third best, you know, team in your you know, conference. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> so like, it's wild, man. The NBA is, is, is nuts. We all know this. Um, um, I mean, look, look, just to jump back to the three point competition for one yeah, second. Yeah. Three guys getting 26 in the first round. Do you remember when getting 26 was like near impossible just 10 years ago? Like maybe oh, just, one guy would get up that high. The the ability, just, the shooting ability has gone through the roof. It's crazy. Yeah, I just looked at the thing and like even even in the 2016 All Star Game, it, which was in Toronto, uh, Clay won the three point shot contest, and it was him and Steph in the finals. And Steph hit a 22 in the finals. So like. That was, and he was, I mean, I think Clay got like, I think Clay got 26 to win that one as well. But like, even back then, a guy like Steph wasn't hitting, wasn't like consistently hitting the, all those shots. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with the starry ball, because <laughs> are we like that starry ball? You're starry on this podcast? I feel like we're coming at starry here. <laughs> Hard anti-starry. Well, this sponsorship. 
Starry made them turn that court green and make everyone look like they were dwelling in a swamp, then yeah, <laughs> I'm anti Starry. Uh, okay, guys, uh, we've we've wrung all we can out of talking about the All Star Game. So, were there any All Star Game moments that you liked? By the way, uh, I meant to ask. Um, oh, I wanted to go on one. Right? I wanted to go on one rant, if I may. Go for it. Very briefly. Love it. Love it. We haven't actually talked about the dunk off at all. That's true. We haven't. I meant to do that. You're um, right. Sorry. Let's so, you know, I feel like there was maybe some element of disappointment in the dunk off yet again. I think there were, you know, a couple of dunks that were pretty cool uh, as usual. But then I think everyone was pretty upset about the scoring again, as there always is. And, you know, trying to get a G leaguer versus Jalen Brown. And they want to make sure Jalen Brown is like well treated because he's a bigger star, et cetera, et cetera. Here's my thought process that I've been thinking about. Do you think the proliferation of like YouTube dunkers who best anything you'll ever see in the all-star game with their dunks. Like you just scroll Instagram and every, if you have a basketball based algorithm like me, every 12th video is the greatest dunk you've ever seen in your life. Has the availability yeah. of being able to see those kind of maybe permanently nullify the entertainment value of the NBA dunk off at all-star weekend and made it sort of a moot point. And, you know, we all keep tuning in. I think all three of us are probably guilty of thinking maybe this one will be so fucking good every single yeah. year. And then, you know, there's a really good one only every like eight or nine years. But is that even a cycle that's likely to continue or has social media and specified dunker accounts sort of ruined the dunk off forever? Yeah, I think it's a very valid point. I, I don't know if it's ruined it for forever because I still think that people will want to see the best players in the world pull off some of these dunks. So if some of them can come and they don't have to do the, you know, some of these guys are just acrobats, basically. Like they're barely basketball players. They're more more so like, as you said, highly specialized to do these types of dunks and stuff. But um, it is like, you know, the dunk off is, is not a... Um, uh, a physical competition so much as it is an artistic competition where it's like, Hey, yeah. how, what kind of spin can I put on this? What kind of, how can I dazzle the eye with what I'm doing? And like, it's, it is very difficult to beat uh, social media videos that are specifically designed to be artistic and to dazzle your eye more so than be a, a like a functional basketball play or something like that. But those yeah. guys are even like, those guys are, they're not, they're not bringing a persona to it as well. Right. Like mm -hmm. when you get, like, you know, the, the last great dunk off is probably the 2016 Toronto dunk off between Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine. And they were both stars on the come up who were like, you know, they have personas to bring to the battle as well. And like, maybe that is what elevates it because the guys pulling off dunks that are seemingly oh, yeah. breaking the rules of physics, you don't know who they are and you'll never see them again after one video. <laughs> so does that, yeah, hard to know what makes it entertaining anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 should should Mac McClung have been in the dunk competition in the first place? I mean, yes, if you think that he she you want to see that level of of you want to see the top level kind of, and then the answer is kind of no. If it's just like, well, this is the NBA dunk contest, you know what I mean? Like, uh, this is supposed to be for the players in the league. So, like, do you think though? Here's a question for you guys: Do you think if he wasn't in it and Jalen Brown did as well as he did, that was probably the the winning performance? That that would have been better or worse or just the same? Because I kind of think it would have been just the same, even though I obviously Mac McClung crushed that dunk competition and was by far the best. Yeah. But I think we all would have been like, yeah, okay, he won the dunk contest, you know? Yeah, but it's like you need the dunk contest to go to – it's not just like, one, who did well, who who did he beat, and, and how did he beat him? It's like you, the dunk off needs to, like Brendo said, needs to have this artistic sort of elevation to – it needs to blow your mind, which is such a tall order. So it I is. don't know. I, I think Jalen Brown's dunks weren't so spectacular that they would have been memorable. Yeah, I think it's like, I think it's really hard to pin down what exactly we need from the slam dunk competition right now. Does it need to, It because it feels like it needs to be the most incredible dunk you've ever seen in your life. And it's like, um, to mention wrestling again, wrestling got to this point like in the 90s and early aughts where um, every single move had to be crazy and every match had to have blood and every match had to have somebody going through tables. And like the, the scale got so high 
that WWE had to correct in the opposite way and go like, we're not doing any of that stuff anymore. There will be no more blood for a couple of years to bring people's baseline expectations back down. Uh, I don't know that there's putting a genie back in the bottle for something like the slam dunk competition, but yeah. the idea that everything has to be a one up, one up, one up when there is just like realistically a physical limit to what, how cool a dunk can look and what, uh, how many people we can jump over and uh, how many different ways we can bounce it off the backboard or the floor or whatever. Like, you know, I don't know. It's very tough. It's very difficult to to figure out what, what, uh, and, and what we all want from this thing anymore. It's a different problem, but another problem that the all-star experience faces, obviously. Um Okay, we've got some quick all-star trivia here. Uh, just a couple questions. Uh, do you guys have access to a piece of paper and a pen? Uh, yes, if you so give me you can show 20 me your seconds. Answers. Yes, go for it. Um, I've, I've, scoured, I've scoured the internet to find some Raptors-based... Um, that wasn't even uh, 20 seconds. I'm good to Not go. even. You were, so, you were so fast. So I've got a couple Raptors-based all-star questions... And then I've got um, um, just some other ones that are not. Uh, okay, are you guys ready for your? This is a direct competition. We're going to see who wins here. Um, you, you, we're going to show the answers at the same time. It's not about like who gets it first. We're just going to see who gets it because so it could very well end in a tie. All right. So the worst part about this competition is that everyone's going to see my handwriting. The, oh, embarrassing for <laughs> which, you. Which my mother still shames me about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I have, a, I have a, a pretty... This one should be fairly easy for us Raptor fans. Who was the first Toronto Raptor to play in an All-Star game? Who was the first Raptor to play in an oh, All-Star I, game? I just realized I'm going to get this wrong, but I'll do it anyways. Are we showing it? It's going to be like one, two, three, show? Uh, or one, two, three, show. <gasps> Wait, uh, Is it Wait. Damon Stoudemire? We've got Damon Stoudemire from Brendan. We got Vince Carter from Miguel. And the correct answer is Vince Carter is the first to play oh. in the All Star game. Uh, I believe oh, Damon, was, Damon was. Pardon? Stoudemire was in the rookie game that year. He was in the rookie game. That is correct. Yes. But he did not play in the All Star game. Okay. Oh, that's one point. Tape's coming off your glasses there, Brendo. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I'm, trying, uh, I'm pulling a Matherin. <laughs> which Toronto Raptor. Okay, moving on. Which Toronto Raptor has the most all-star appearances as a Raptor? As a Raptor, who has the most NBA all-star appearances? This person uh, I'm ready. has six all-star appearances. There are two people directly under him who have five. Mm -hmm. It's, it's tight. It's close in there. Brendo, you ready? One, okay. two, three, show. Is it Kalo? It is Kalo. Kyle Lowry with six. Both oh, are correct. Yeah. Brendan and Miguel each get a point there. This is good. This is this one might separate us a bit here, though. This is this is a tight matchup, but we got a we got a one where I need you to list some players. So okay, okay. Of all the Raptors that have made the All Star game over the years, there have been twenty six selections. That's just selections. It's not players. There are four players who have only appeared as a Raptor once on the All-Star in the uh, in the All-Star game. So four players as Raptors have only appeared once. What who are those four players? Uh you know, this one should be should be easy to get one, pretty easy to get one anyways, at the very least. Um uh that um you know, this this uh, spans the years for us Raptors fans. This is going to be a fun one. Um I'm going four for four here. Watch this. Oh, four I'm gonna, four. I'm gonna get demolished here. This is uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just like because you can pick like oh what about like I'm just trying to pick your <laughs> guys that I was like oh did he uh, one one year yeah the three I feel like the three is kind of gettable the four is like that's kind of elite the four the fourth is an elite one well, prepare to be. Amazed. <laughs> Miguel has it. I, I'm just, I'm I'm just bluffing hard. I'm just going hard. <laughs> Texas Hold'em style here. Uh, um, okay. Wow. Um, you can't even write four names. Brendan's just even write four names. I'm, like, I'm just like, well, I'm like, ah, but like, I'm trying to pull different eras. Um, it's, 
It's tough to do it live right. uh, when you when you're when you know you're on a timer when you know you're on a show and you're like uh, and you know and you know you're I about get to get metaphorically dunked on by Miguel. Ruiz. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm pulling like guys who have like I don't even know if they made an all star game. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna be so bad. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> write write one joke name, Brendo. Uh, I, I have at least two joke names. <laughs> All right, well, your answer is in three, uh, two, one. Okay, got it. Right, right, right. Got it. Okay. Let's see, Brenda. Uh, let's see, Brenda. Uh, that, that was probably riveting not... podcasting. Listening yeah, to, I'm sure it was. Yeah. Watching me quietly panic. Okay. Um, I put them up. Ready? Three, two, one. Put them up. Okay. Brendo. Okay. Brendo has written Fred, Fred Van Vliet. Yeah. Did Bargnani make it? Uh well, Barniani, you also wrote Mo Pete and Alvin Williams. You went. Wait, I'm to go four for four. You went nuts. Uh, uh, Miguel wrote T Mac, Antonio Davis, Kawhi, and Marcus Camby. Wow, you guys did not get the one that was easy. Uh, that I said that I thought was easy, which is Scotty Barnes. So oh, you missed yeah. Scotty. Of okay. The answer is Scotty Barnes, Fred Van Vliet, Kawhi yeah. Leonard, and Antonio Davis. So those Camby are your made it. Four. Did Camby ever make it? Not as a raptor. Not as a raptor. Oh, so I count how many you got correct there, fellas, and add that to your score. It's oh, currently two one Miguel. I got Miguel, two. Miguel you had two, right? I got Antonio Davis and Kawhi. And then Brendo, you had Fred Van Vliet. That's right. So it is so currently four to two. Oh, I guess T Mac never two. made it as a raptor either, did he? Not as a raptor. No, he was oh, involved he... in the dunk competition in right, two thousand. That's what with, I was thinking. Uh, Vince. Of. Yeah. Okay. Bum they didn't get Van Vliet. Still time here, Brendo, to make it up. You're only two points down, um, and you can make it back on this one. What? Okay, the longest, I want the longest all-star streak for a franchise and the longest drought for a franchise. So what is what has what team has the longest streak of having a player start in the, or uh, appear on the all-star game, not start, sorry, uh, appear on an all-star team, and what Whoa. team has the longest drought of not having a player in the all-star game? I will give you a hint. I'll give you a hint for this. It's the same There's, franchise. <laughs> uh, there is an East and a West team. If you okay. want more of a hint, maybe I can give it. I can even tell no, you. No, no, no. That's, that's good. Now. That's good. That's okay? good. All right. This is, um, I don't want to give too much away, but um, there's a couple in my mind for streak. There's a couple leading the way. Uh, franchises where you're like, oh, they've probably had all stars for 50 years. Like it's, it feels yeah, foreseeable. And then you think, oh wait, there was that one year where they were absolute uh, uh, dog water. So you want me to write uh, them on the same thing, or do you want to do like a double reveal? Uh, you can do it, however you want. Doesn't matter if you want to do that. Uh, do the double reveal. We'll reveal them at the same time. So there is the, the longest streak and the longest drought. Longest streak and the longest drought to having an NBA player in the NBA All Star Game. Um, one of these was a surprise; the other made total sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Let's see those answers, fellows. Um, three, two, one. Show them. What do we got? Okay. Miguel has put Lakers as the streak and Charlotte as the drought. That is incorrect. Both are incorrect. Although Lakers Damn was it. absolutely my guess as a streak. Yeah, come on, Lakers. Uh, and Brendo, what what do you what do you have here? You've got Golden State Warriors for for, uh, for most, for longest, right? and Detroit as the drought. As the drought. Brendo, you got them correct, but what? in the wrong category. It's Detroit <laughs> for streak and Golden State for drought. That's insane. That's crazy. What? Yeah, dude. So Detroit has the longest streak from 1951 to 1979. They have 21, or sorry, 29 All Star games where they had a player in them. That's <laughs> back when there were bricklayers on the team. Exactly. Though. And and the drought is Golden State from 1998 to 2012. Their their uh, wow. their drought went from um uh, um um. 
Oh man, I had his name up here. The guy who choked. Uh, he choked. He choked. Oh, Latrell Sprewell. Thank you, Latrell. Uh, uh, Sprewell was their last All Star, uh, and, and then and Lee David Lee was was in 20, 2012. Oh, or something. David Lee. So oh, yeah. you had fifteen years of Golden State not having a player. I can't, Brenda. I cannot I believe, believe that you got That's both of them. I the can't believe category. the Lakers don't have the longest streak. When have I they know. not had a star player? Well, not that long ago. I feel like isn't before guess, didn't like yeah, before LeBron came. It was like, ooh, did they did anyone make that team? Yeah, they uh, had the anyways. team for a bit, but you would still think the years previous. To yeah, that. you would think like all from Magic Johnson all the way. To I know. Kobe I thought so too. That they would have. A but streak. then you've got those Vladdy Divac years where like yeah. they, or, and like and then they traded yeah. Vladdy. Kobe was on that team. Probably no one yet. Anyways, okay. Well, uh, um, no points awarded on that last round. Although Brendan almost came through. Yeah, that's with incredible. It. Unbelievable. Give me a give me a um, point five. I'll give, you a point five. Five. I'll give yeah, you a point five. I'll give you a point five. Forget the team. I, right. I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. it. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Miguel, for winning the All Star. Um, Thank you very much. The All Star Trivia Challenge. Do you Let's think this is going to spur you on in your life and the rest of your life to perform think, well? And I think through? the second half of this NBA season is probably going to be the best period of my life because whenever <laughs> I'm down, I can just think about. At least I'm not as down as Brendo was in this competition. <laughs> Uh, well, that does it. Uh, thanks so much, you guys, for uh, for hanging in there and uh, you know just at the in the doldrums of the season, uh, ha- having a fun All Star podcast. Um, Miguel, uh, do you have anything you'd like to tell the listeners about? Maybe they can catch you somewhere doing. Yes, something? everyone should go on to any version of social media that you prefer, namely TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and you should check out my ongoing web series, Hot Globe which is a comedic look at the doom we're all facing from climate change. Hot Globe, new episodes once a month and lots of clips in between. Check it out. Hot Globe. Hot Globe. All right. Sounds awesome. Brendo, what, where can we find you doing stuff? Listen, me and Andy, we say this at the end of every podcast. Me and Andy, uh, we also have a web series going on. It's called Space Janitors. It is coming back uh, in May, May the 4th. Uh, we are back. I'm looking at edits right now. It's looking really good. It's going to be really great. When's that big, long uh, streak stream that we're doing? Yeah, me and 20... Andy are streaming for like 12 hours this Saturday um, on our YouTube channel, on Space Janitor's YouTube channel. We are watching um, the sequel the sequel trilogy, um, and then we have guests stopping by from the uh, upcoming season of the show. Uh, it's going to be 12 hours of, of this, of me and Andy <laughs> sitting next to each other and just just talking at each other with uh, a nice healthy <laughs> dose a nice healthy dose of delirium thrown in as yes oh, absolutely yes, let's go. Uh, no question yeah so check uh, it out it's space Channels.com. space Channels on youtube that's where you'll find anything that we're working on right now cool and uh yeah thanks for listening everybody uh um you know if you're if you're listening to the pod on apple give us that five star review that's great or if yeah if you're watching on youtube subscribe to raptors republic there's a bunch of good stuff ha- happening here it's a great little area of the internet. Okay. See you guys all next week. Goodbye. Thanks for having me.